not getting the attention. Other spectacular freshmen are, but he should. Look at those numbers his last six games. The Wolfpack is led in scoring by sophomore Julius Hodge at 18 and a half points per game. Good evening and welcome everybody. Dave O'Brien along with Brad Doherty. It's just beginning to snow outside. And Brad, it seems whenever you and I come to Raleigh <laughs> to do a game here in this beautiful building, it's snowing outside. They're not going to let us back. They're going to stop asking us to come uh, to the lovely Raleigh and do these ball games. It's getting a little cool out there, but it's a great night to be inside watching a little college basketball. Some great guard matchups between 8 and 3 NC State and 6 and 6 Boston College. And the Wolfpack will have the first crack of the basket. Immediately, the Wolfpack go down inside. They're going to get Josh Powell on that block. They need to establish a little bit more post presence. They take a lot of out shots, a lot of long shots, and subsequently, they don't rebound the ball as well. Well, they will try a three immediately. It just nicks the rim. I mean, that's evidence of it right there. First shot of the ball game is a three-point shot with no one on the backboard. They're last in the ACC in rebounding. That could be a great reason why. And it knocks down a three. So Boston College with a quick answer. A three-point shot by Louis Hennett. Hennett, very key to that Boston College basketball team. He takes a lot of pressure off of Troy Bell. And when Hennett makes shots, he gains confidence as well. And that's something he needs more of. Powell will shoot from long range and drain a three. So right back at the Eagles with a tray of his own. It's going to be a jump shooting contest. You've got your, both of your big forwards out shooting jumpers, Marcus Melvin as well as Josh Powell. Let's see somebody get down inside. Let's start some offense from down that block, create some consistency, then go out. He makes it. Nice shot. And you know with uh, the Eagles star, Troy Bell, on the floor, there is plenty of perimeter jump shooting to watch tonight. And he gets it up high to Sydney. Tornicant. With a shot clock at eight, they do get it inside. Sydney banks it in. With a quick move. So strong, 6'2", 205 pounds, catches the ball. Nice shot off the glass. Al Skinner in his sixth season at Boston College. He led the Eagles to 20 wins and a berth in the NCAA tournament last year. But they have dug themselves a hole, Brad, six and six. They have lost four in a row. So getting back to the NCAA this year is going to be some kind of stretch. The problem for them right now is Uka Akbay being hurt, hurting his neck. He's kind of the emotional and inspirational leader of this basketball team. I talked to Troy Bell earlier, and he says that he needs, they need a little bit more firepower from everyone. A look at the starting lineup. So we mentioned Troy Bell, now a senior. He has played 103 college games. He has scored in double figures in 97 of them. Absolutely. You see North Carolina State, Marcus Melvin, nice out shooter at six feet, nine inches tall. He's going to let back one little more. They need his scoring at 14 a game. DC up two in the early minutes here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Up top for Sydney. Talking about Sydney just a little while ago, just a powerful player at 6'2, averages eight rebounds a game, does a good job. One of those guys that can play multiple positions at 6'2. Greg Smith unable to get one to go from close range, but he's averaging 21 a game. The freshman for Boston College. Herb Sedig in his seventh season here in Raleigh. He took them to the second round of the NCAA tournament last year. They won 23 games. Coming in 8-3 and three into this one. Mm -hmm. Did a great job last year, Dave. And losing Elian Eptimov early in the season has really put this ball club in a bind because of his passing ability and his good hands and just savvy that's missing. NC State showing some pressure. BC able to hang on to it. Look at that. Look at Sydney. 6-2 on the block. He takes a much bigger 6-6 Hodge and just takes it to the front of the rim. Ryan City, and truly a great rebounding guard, a fellow who is not afraid to play amongst the trees and inside the paint. There's great four points. Great job by Cliff, 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 Cliff Crawford. That's a tough <laughs> twist. Going to that basket nice and hard. Yeah, they've got Marcus Melvin, <laughs> Clifford Crawford, and Scooter Sherrill. <laughs> Sydney again, but it's goaltended. Count the basket. Foul with a goal 10, so Boston College up 9-5. to five. We're talking about Troy Bell Brad and a guy who, I think on the national radar among the great guards in America, has kind of fallen off that screen the last couple of years. Well, absolutely. Two years ago, he's co-big player of the year in the Big East, and he's kind of like went backwards just a little bit, but I think it's because of his teammates. He doesn't have the firepower around him that he's had his sophomore year, and he's pressing a little bit, trying to make things happen. He told me that the team's confidence is way down right now, but they're starting to pick up a little bit of chemistry, and he thinks they'll get better. Well, he's averaging 23 a game, but his shooting numbers are actually down over the last couple of years. 
Dornikin, Nate Dornikin, the seven-footer out of Odessa, Ontario, connects his first two. Dornikin squared up, took a nice look at the basket. No one came out and contested him, so he just shot the shot. Uncontested, wide right open. And BC's hit a number of uncontested shots, five out of six. Odd spinning, he's the top scorer for the Wolfpack. And again, a little bit short on the shot. A fight for it. Down on the low block. And a foul on the play. 15-58 to play in the first half. So Boston College has shot out to a six-point lead, a game they desperately need on the road in Raleigh, North Carolina. Back inside the RBC Center here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Boston College with a six-point lead. We talked about Eftimoff for NC State out for the season with a torn ACL. Boston College with a major injury of their own. Uka Agbai, the BC forward, 6'9", 262 pounds. They lost him on December 1st for the rest of the year, Brad. Both of these guys, Eftimoff, like I say, a very savvy ball player. Does the little things that make the team very cohesive. And Agbai, the emotional leader of Boston College, can't replace him. And averaging 14 points, nine rebounds for BC, so they sorely missed him. And in the paint in particular, Boston College has become by and large a perimeter shooting team. A nifty block by Craig ah. Smith. Tell you what, Hodge caught that ball twice, goes up, Smith knocks it out, Hennett comes back and gets it the second time. Well, more basketball coming up tonight. The doubleheader continuing on ESPN2. We've got Louisville against East Carolina a little bit later. And right now it's a matchup of the ACC against the Big East. Hodge from the wing. Follows his own miss, right back in. Very hustle by Hodge. That's what you want to see when you shoot the ball. Is your is your player going and following his shot? But terrible box out by Boston College. Got to put a body on. And now pressure by the Wolfpack again, trying to force the turnover, and they do. So that's just that that miscommunication right there. When, whenever you have the ball as a as a guard, we're going to watch Hodge here. Good defense. Smith runs all up. Nobody boxes out. And the mistake right there by Boston College, the point guard, or whoever the main ball handler is, breaking the press, has to end up with the ball. So Sidney was throwing it back to Bell, and he didn't want it. Watkins long, and it went high up in the air for the rebound. Tough shot. Wow. It's Bell way downtown. Tough shot. I mean, that's, you run it out in transition, you take a shot like that, that puts so much pressure on your teammates because no one's ready to rebound the basketball. And I think that's what's affected his, his shooting percentage. He feels pressure sometimes to take those type of shots to keep his team in the game. Well, for Al Skinner, Troy Bell as a sophomore, shot 46% when he was the co-Big East player of the year. That seems like a long time ago. He's been in college basketball as a star player for such a long time. Down to 41% last year. No traveling violation to turnover again. Hodge goes around the back, in the lane. Fall by Sherrill, but he was fouled. Stops the clock at 14.55 left in the half. And as we get a look at those shooting percentages, which have dipped for Troy Bell, now his scoring numbers are up, obviously, from almost 19 a game that sensational freshman year to 23 now. I mean, you look at his sophomore year, he was probably in the top 10 in the NBA draft. I know we don't like to talk about that, but he was playing that well that uh, the NBA scouts thought that he was a lock to come out and participate at that level but he's he, he, his game doesn't seem to be as effective right now like I said I think it's because of his teammates around him are a little unsure but as they pick up confidence I think Troy Bell will be back top of the list of guards Cheryl at the line but what about that theory Brad and I know it's shared among some NBA circles that he doesn't like physical play if you nail him a couple of times if you get physical rough him up early in the game he's just going to back out and shoot from the perimeter well, I think that happens because when you don't have the key go-to people around you that if Troy Bell doesn't score a ton of points some nights this team doesn't win mm -hmm. and so he gets knocked around bumped around and all of a sudden it's well they're not winning because he gets bumped and he doesn't respond well if he's got someone else to take a little pressure off of him that, that changes that whole story so I don't think I buy that I know that that's one of the knocks but I don't buy that I think he's a super player he's just feeling a lot of pressure right now trying to do too much gets a look for Smith now Sydney and he's perfect from the field and when you're shooting that close over the rim you're going to be four for four for the night and you got a 6-2 guard who is just a monster around the basket it's a, it's a joy to watch a guy who just dominates around that basket that size and he's guarding the guy 6-7 6-6 Double team, fade away, catches a lot of rim, but he got the shooter's roll. These two guys, Julius Hodge as well as Sidney, guarding one another in that particular instant. Both of them very difficult to guard, 
Oh, just capable of putting it on the floor, shooting it outside, shooting it inside. Bells three rolls around and in, so they beat the press and they make the Wolfpack pay for it. It's interesting, there's no stops on the basketball court right now. What I mean by stops is there's no one digging in defensively, taking the ball from the other team, just shutting them down. Let's come down, shoot wide open jump, come down, shoot wide open jump. There you go. I think you and I can play in this game. Hodge with a three-pointer. He has seven points. And both teams are shooting the rock very efficiently. I mean, look at that. When, when does the defense lock in? When do you decide that you're going to stop someone? I'm, and I'm talking about both basketball teams. Right now, it's just up and down. And uh, make three or four good passes, and the defense breaks down and take a jump shot. I mean, this is the most they've used the shot clock in this entire basketball game. Down to seven. Sydney sees it. You should have a wide open shot coming off the shot clock and you know it's coming. Down to one. Are they going to get it off? They did not. They dribbled it right away. And lost the possession. Great. And you know Al Skinner wants to see them shoot the ball because they're seven for ten out of the game. Absolutely wanted to keep shooting that basketball. Keep pushing the basketball up, taking your opportunities. That time they had several people that were open off the screens. They just didn't shoot the ball. Uh, Bell came off the screen right outside of the three-point line. He was wide open for two seconds, didn't shoot it. Boston College has made seven. NC State five. Boston College passing the ball well, except for that last trip down the floor. Melvin is open. He's cold early on, but they get another chance. Melvin to shoot. No, a great pass underneath for two. Oh, I'll tell you what. Hodge. It doesn't look pretty, but it, it darn sure goes in. He's very effective. He has nine points, but a nifty feed from Melvin off the fake. Certainly had me faked out. I thought he was going to shoot it. You got a guy 6 8 out, out on the perimeter who's as capable as he is. You definitely have to run at it. He drew the defender to him. Tied at 16. Sydney. Thought he had a lane, but he traveled with it. He turns it over. And so to go back to the Wolfpack, they're going to bring Powell, Josh Powell, back into the game. The 6'9 sophomore from Riverdale, Georgia. Josh Powell is the one true post player on this basketball team. And I'm sure he'll get some opportunities to touch the ball around the basket. North Carolina State's picked up their defense just a little bit. Down here, they have done a good job of attacking on the screens and, and the rotation. So maybe they're going to be the ones that step up and, and play the D. There's a pass down. He can make a good strong move. You've got to be ready. Don't wait on that double team go. He's trapped now. And threw it away. He saw the double team coming and he kept waiting for it to get closer and closer. You catch that basketball, you got to either pass it or make your move right now. So indecisive. They kick it over. BC coming in with a 6-6 six and six record. They have by and large been a perimeter shooting team, although not a great shooting team, just 46%. Although they've been hot tonight, Julius Hodge, really a man without a position, nine points. And how about this man, Ryan Sidney, also without a position, but both cooking early in Raleigh, North Carolina. Need all the scorers. He and Ryan Sidney of Boston College, a couple of guys really without a position, Brad. Absolutely. Both of them extremely effective. And you, you see Julius Hodge here. He played poor game against Georgia Tech the other night, but he took all the blame on himself. Said, I got to play better. Sidney attacks the goal constantly around the basket. Both these guys shoot the three extremely well. Both of these guys are, are, are very good underneath the basket. Both have good hands. And, and, and Hodge is strong despite his slight build. Obviously, Sidney's strong. And they're playmakers for these basketball teams. And, uh, as they go, these teams will go. Both listed as guards and forwards. In Sydney's case, last year he led the nation in rebounding among players 6'2 or shorter. I think you call Sydney guard, forward, and center. I think you I'm right. impressed with it. He goes right at you. And they are the leading scorers. Cheryl trying to get into the scoring column. It's tipped away. The look back with it. The fight. And the basket by Watkins. Very good job by Levi Watkins. He has to come in and keep the momentum going for this Wolfpack basketball club. If they're going to build any depth as they go through the ACC, ACC season, he needs to be able to come in off that bench and give them positive minutes. Betterman coming off the bench for the Wolfpack picks up a quick foul. And tonight the college basketball doubleheader continues on ESPN2. Louisville taking on East Carolina. These teams met for the first time last year with split decisions. 
Coach Patino issued a, a, a warning to everyone in college basketball saying his team is playing the type of basketball that the way it should be played. So you come play them, you're going to see basketball the right way. They certainly did against Kentucky as they blew out their in-state rival. Sherrill gets banged underneath. Takes it out for high. Another trade off the mark. Coach Skinner had a little come to come to principal meeting with his his folks. They seem to have turned it up a notch defensively. The turn and shoot, and it's knocked down by Ryan Sidney. So he stays warm. I mean, you got to get out on that guy. You can't just let him turn and shoot that ball that easily. There has to be, you know, some desire. There has to be passion when you're out guarding that guy. There has to be some urgency to try to shut a guy down each play. Well, he's a perfect five for five. They better put somebody on him. Powell can't get the roll. So Boston College able to hit the glass. Three-point field goals, BC three out of six. And they're only shooting 29.7% for the year from three-point distance. Nice pass. Smith there. Got it. Very good recognition by, 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 by Sidney there. Smith made a nice step in and a lot of traffic. And those two guys made eye contact. And he was able to throw a bounce pass through the defense. And uh, Smith used that big body to, to shield off the defender. 6'7", 265 pounds, but a muscular 265. Pretty thick. There's not much, uh, not much, much pork on that bone. <laughs> no. Made a lot of beef. Out of Los Angeles, the freshman has been sensational this year. Number two in scoring for Boston College, but not many talk about him, Brad. Certainly with the J.J. Reddicks and the Matt Walshes and people like Anthony up in Syracuse, he's kind of getting second fiddle treatment, isn't he? Yeah, it? he is. You get guys like myself and, and all of us guys at ESPN would do the college hoops tonight. We always talk about the guys who are winning all the time. And, you know, they're struggling a little bit right now, Boston College, but... He deserves the same respect. He's just as good as any freshman I've seen in the country. Sydney finally misses a shot. And a foul with exactly nine minutes to play in the first half. BC up three. See, see Hodge right here. We're going to talk about spacing and, and, and taking good basketball shots. The pass comes out. And instead of moving into the basket and taking a better shot, look where he's at. Look where he's at. He's all the way out here when he can move into this lane and use a little bit, take up some of that space and get a much better shot, get himself to follow his, a chance to follow his shot, get his own rebound along with his teammates. Standing that far out, shooting that jump shot, he's going to watch the ball. He has no chance to go, go to the basket. He's going to drift away. The Wolfpack have fallen in love with the perimeter shot. And at times it has cost them this year. When they shoot well, they win. When they've shot 51%, or better in games, they have won eight times. 34% in their three losses. I thought that was a great move by Josh Powell just then. He caught the ball a little bit outside of the lane, maybe eight, nine feet, but a nice, powerful dribble in the middle, a little half hook. Didn't go down, but it was an excellent shot. And Powell tying up with Dornicamp. Did a good job drawing the foul and a look at the shooting problems they have had, particularly on the road. At home, they've been awfully good. 8-0 in this building, the RBC Center, there's 7-0. And look at the point differential. Well, at home, you get hot, you make a few shots, the fans are cheering for you, it's all great and good. On the road, if you don't have a, a consistent inside presence, or at least throw the ball inside, you're going to struggle. Well, then kicked it to Hodge, and he line drive it in. Well, he shot that thing, it was straight out. <laughs> it was a line drive. But like I say, it's not pretty sometimes, but he is very effective. He looked down at his hand after it went in as if it slipped. I wish my slips were in like that. <laughs> I <didn't> know it. <laughs> Sydney with it. Bell is open. Gets in a little more. He'll get another chance. See, by him stepping in, it gave that his teammate a chance to rebound. There's Sydney. Little big man. Boy, he does play big, doesn't he? 6'2, 200 pounds out of Ann Arbor, Michigan. 13 points in the first half for Ryan Sydney. BC by two. They run a little bit of a motion offense most of the time. Wolfpack does, but everyone on the basketball court for the offense at particular points in time are but the free throw line. No travel here. The whistle was actually because of a foul. See, I think he did pick up his feet. Let's watch those feet. Yeah. Well, take advantage of it. Is that call? Step up there and make those free throws. That's a part of the game. Yep. Al Skinner wondering when this became an NBA game. Powell <laughs> at the line at 11 and a half points per contest. Josh Powell, the sophomore, 
earned a spot on the all freshman team in the ACC last year and he's having a very good all around season so far. I think he's uh, improved quite a bit and uh, like I said he had a solid year last year. I'd like to see him get more touches of the basketball. I think he could be that one guy that really gives them the consistency we keep talking about down deep that they're going to need once they get deeper into the conference play. And a very good defender. He did a great defensive job on Virginia star Travis Watson recently holding him to 10 points although I know Pete Gillen has a different view. He felt Watson did not get enough respect from the officiating crew that night. That had more to do with it than anything. Boston College with a one point lead. This is a game that Al Skinner needs to have to get over 500 for the year. An NCAA tournament Boy, bid. That is a great question, and I think that is the thing that hangs over their head right now. I just don't think they have the depth that's improved enough to be able to play seven, eight guys. I mean, he's going to play five, six guys each evening, and that gets a little tough, especially when the starting five is a little shaky because of confidence. So uh, it's hard to develop any self esteem you know, if, you, if your first five don't have not solid, good chemistry there. So I think they've got some problems with that. No basket for Craig Smith. He was walking five turnovers for Boston College. Skinner disagrees. Al Skinner will tell you, he said, look, when I played, I played 40 minutes a night. So all this talk about depth, he said, I'm not sure. But over the course of a Big East season with the physical play in that conference, it remains to be seen if it can be done with only five or six. Absolutely. Man, that's, a, that's a great point. Scooter Sherrill made a nice move with the basket, took it off the dribble. No defender came from the weak side, didn't help. He had a layup. I remember Al Skinner playing with Julius Irving in the Nets. Back in the day when they had the big afros and the short shorts. I'd play 40 with Julius. Oh, so absolutely. Dr. J too. Yeah. Hang out look good. <laughs> and in the pictures, you know. That's right. Get in the photo. <laughs> Watson. On five for Smith. He doesn't like to play that far from the basket. His money is made in the paint. Shot clock is at six. Really not setting very good screens. Boston College. Oh, man. Josh Powell bailed him out. And a foul. Boy, as Bell got hit as the shot clock was expiring. It's something that happens all the time with Bell from three point distance. Look at this foul. See the time running down is three, two, one. Oh boy, that's that's ooh, that's that's great awareness by the senior, Troy Bell. And Powell shouldn't have run out. I mean, there's no, he's not gonna block that. Just run out jump and land within six feet of the guy. We talk about how frequently this occurs with Troy Bell getting fouled beyond the three point line. He's played in 104 college games. This has happened 48 times where he's drawn that foul while shooting a three. You know what? I'd say there's a pattern there. I think you're right, <laughs> Mr. Doherty. I think you've surmised correctly. Oh man, so so if I'm in the pregame meeting, I'm telling my guys, you don't foul Troy Bell. You don't get anywhere near him if that shot clock's running down. You run out and stop. Give me a good jump stop. Put your hand up. The foul shots take BC up by two. NCAA basketball is Boston College and NC State inside the RBC Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. Brad Doherty, Dave O'Brien with you. Thanks for joining us tonight as part of our doubleheader. And it is snowing here in Raleigh. Of course it is. We're here. Head, of course. Absolutely. Joe kicks out for Crawford. He knights his way into the paint and draws the foul. Much to the chagrin of Ryan Sidney, who did not think he committed it. Well, tomorrow night, the NBA season continues with a doubleheader on ESPN and ESPN2. At 7 Eastern, the Milwaukee Bucks take on the 76ers in Philadelphia. Then at 9.30 on ESPN, it's the Lakers meeting the Houston Rockets. Shaq against Yao. And what do you think, Brad Doherty, about that one? How is that going to go? You, you had an interesting comment before the game about the, the nature of physical play among big men now in the NBA. Absolutely. The game has changed uh, drastically over the past five years. When I, you know, when, when I played a thousand years ago, but when I played, you could still use your hands. You could put like, your hands on a guy and you could control him as a big player. There weren't any flavored fouls. So when you played against guys like Bob Lanier or Bill Lambeer, people like that, they would take you to the ground. Now you've got to guard a guy with your forearm. So the physicality of the game is not as prevalent. You know, the athletes are much better now. So uh, I think Yao will do just fine against Shaquille. Obviously, Shaquille weighs about 100 more pounds than he does. <laughs> yeah. That's a huge advantage. But Yao is very uh, long and fluid, and he'll get shots off to be able to score. Hey, speaking of fluid, 
How about Ryan Sidney? Watch him return this one. Well, look where he's at. Around that basket, knows the basket. Good foul. Good foul drawing opportunity. He draws it and goes to the free throw line. 15 points for Sidney. He's already topped his average. Make it 16. He has been the man for the Eagles in the first half. When you watch him play and you're sitting there saying to yourself, this guy is six foot two, maybe. But he's around every rebound. He's around the basket. He makes open jumpers. I mean, just a, a, a truly a triple threat on that basketball court. Powell is left open. Good rebound by Mel. I'd like to see him do more of that. He's so versatile. I'd like to see him get inside and get a few more rebounds because he's so good. That left hand is so hard to defend. Go right back up. Crawford directing traffic. Although this Wolfpack team under Herb Sennett won really without a point guard in the traditional sense. The pull up pop by Cheryl is there. Nice job by Cheryl. Started, he made a couple of nice shots. They had a good drive about three plays ago. I think it's all confidence with Scooter Cheryl as well. He uh, really struggled a little bit last year understanding the concepts, but you know, he's, he's a hard working kid. He's a great high school basketball player, McDonald's All American. And, now he's getting some serious playing time. And there's that man again, Ryan Sidney. He keeps finding a way into the lane. He has 18 points. That's too easy. I mean, you can't let a 6'2 guy go up and draft the dunk. But you got to block that. Hodge over Sidney that time. He answers back. Pretty good pace in this one, 31-30. Hodge has 14. So everyone is breaking into the scoring column and indeed into the double-figure scoring column. Oh, it's, it's, it's feast of famine on each end. I mean, it's one shot and you're usually done, or one bad pass, and it's... It's all high. Good call. Off the wolf pack. It'll be eagle ball with 4 0 to go and a half. NC State has been very unpredictable lately. This month, they have lost games to UMass. They have beaten Virginia. And last week, they were blown out by Georgia Tech by 24 points. Well, the big thing is they've been getting crushed on the backboards. I mean, <clears throat> they just do not do a good job of, of defensively rebounding the ball. They're last in the ACC, obviously, offensive rebounding the ball. So that takes away possessions, opportunities lost, uh, point loss. They just don't struggle until they rebound the ball better and have some inside presence. So, barely avoided the five-second violation, but they turn it over anyway. Good pass. Oh, found it. Powell stucks. Nice pass. Boy, that's great court awareness by Hodge. That's outstanding. That all came because of the turnover off the inbounds. Six points for Powell. Got it. Well, that was a tough move. Good defense by Cheryl. Forced the baseline. The help was just a little bit late. But Troy Bell made an excellent shot under pressure. Eight points for the senior for Minneapolis. And a whistle away from the basketball down low. Hodge getting tangled up. Along with Sydney. Called on Sydney. Sydney grabbed him by the uniform as he ran down the middle, and they both locked hands. Sydney's second foul to go along with 18 points and eight of nine shooting. So for Al Skinner, Ryan Sydney, the junior from Ann Arbor, has been the guy. Hodge at the line. He's had a very good first half with 14 points. I mean, he is. Uh, Ryan Sidney and the rest of the team. That's incredible. He's come to play tonight. Uh, if they can add to it, Troy Bell gets a little bit of something going. Timeout, 328 to play in a half. I mean, what position does this guy play? Look at the ball handling Hodge has here. Behind the back, not only ball handling, court awareness. Making his teammates better. They need to let me do a little chalk talking, man. All you do is get your great big guy and throw it inside to him. Let him go to work. It's all you need. Yeah, for 40 minutes, that'd be exciting. <laughs> this kind of beats that. We've had a lot of long distance accuracy tonight. And Ryan Sidney has been tremendous. And Saturday, the top two college basketball teams in the nation are on ABC Sports. Top ranked Duke taking on the defending national champs, the Maryland Terrapins. Those of you on the West Coast will see number two Arizona take on UCLA. It all starts Saturday at 1.30 Eastern on ABC. Well, I'll tell you, Duke is getting better and better. Their offense is starting to come together. Those freshmen are starting to recognize each other a little better. J.J. Redick is off the charts, man. Oh, they're, man. they're looking great. And that kills me to say that. I know, this is the pain on your face. Is that it's painstaking. To all of us here in Raleigh tonight. <laughs> They're good. Very good this year. Bell to run. Bell, 
little bit disconcerted there. Barked at a teammate who could not get free. And Watkins fouls Smith. You know, and that's a that's a big part of it. He's trying to run the team and get guys to get in their positions. And, and we don't know exactly when they're running that play where guys are supposed to be. I have an idea. And if guys are out of position, you know, you get frustrated as a as the leader of the team or the best player or the guy who's been around the longest because plays, you know, only work if you run them to precision, if you execute them. And uh, you can't execute your play if guy's out of place, and that makes him look bad. Little delay is Ryan Sidney. He's been so hot, he has come right out of his pants. Had to cinch up his drawers there. I tell you, man, that happens. <laughs> 18 first half points. Smith can't get it. But your thoughts on Craig Smith, the freshman who has been out of this world in his first season for Boston, missing it. He, he, he really he struggled tonight, but uh, like I said, I think he is, is just a super young player. Uh, as he gets more confidence, we keep talking about that, but starts to get into the chemistry of this team. I think he could be a real leader for this basketball team. The Boston College freshman with the a one for five night so far. Watson with the foul. 203 to go, first half. And the freshman in Saturday's loss to Syracuse played 35 minutes. He scored 26 points and hauled in 10 rebounds. Troy Bell had 29 in that game, but it was not enough to overcome the orange. Yeah, well, they did they need Mr. Smith to get going this evening here. I mean, there's two minutes to go in his half, and they're only down a bucket. If they could just get some more inside play from him, get him on the back foot to change the complexion of the game because State's not doing a great job getting after the glass. Head to head against another super freshman, Carmelo Anthony. Their numbers awfully close. Mm. Well, that's big numbers right there, Dad. I tell you. Wow. That's the freshman, man. Syracuse won that game 82-74 to send the Eagles to their fourth consecutive loss. Now, the Eagles' poor foul shooting cost them in that one. They only shoot 63% as a team from the line. So if this one stays close. Look for that to be a factor in the late minutes. I mean, these freshmen are just unbelievable this year. And, uh, I mean, 26 points a guy. I didn't take 26 shots the whole year as a freshman. I mean, that, that's just incredible confidence and uh, just, just maturity, I guess. Boston College, 57%. NC State is 41%. Boston College can thank Ryan Sidney for that 57%. He's shooting point blank shots. Powell jumps in for the rebound. So the Wolves pack up three on their home floor in the first half. Spread the floor. Look at all the offense starts above the basket, trying to cut a, uh, someone in low. Get Hodge in the basket. Pass. Finish it. Very good. Very good basketball. And another good look from Melvin, his second nifty pass. Two big guys, high-low passes, taking advantage of their size. So the Wolf back and open up a little five-point lead. A bit of a cushion here. Where's the defense? Oh, man. Sydney inside for Smith. He got fouled. He could not make it a three-point play attempt. A little high-low game here. See a nice pass right there to, to Melvin. He gives a little fake. Good little touch pass. Josh Powell shows good hands, good finish. Good basketball. It's good basketball because you're taking advantage of your, your, your mismatch in size there. Herb Sunday looking for a call. He took his team to the NCAA tournament last year where they beat Michigan State. And then lost to Karan Butler and UConn. Smith at the line. And gets it. Controversy there. Looked like Smith's hand was in the net. I don't know if I think that's what the complaining is about. Less than 45 okay. seconds and a half. Watkins, the open man. They certainly got the shot they wanted. Wide open shot for State. Sydney tries the back shot again. It's tipped in. <laughs> oh, that's incredible. That's incredible. He just 6-2. Uh, <laughs> he has 20 points in the first half and a timeout for the Wolfpack. Just seconds ago, they had a five-point lead. But because of Sydney's tip of his own miss, that ties it at 38. Here's the uh, discrepancy down there. They throw the pass down to Smith. Let's see what happens here. Well, there's a tip back in right there by Sydney. Great hustle. 
So Sydney nine out of 11 from the field and 20 points. He has put BC on his back here in the first half. Let's uh, go back to that play. Here it is. Nice pass. Good luck. Well, finish it. Well, Powell swatted. Oh, so he swatted the net. At the net. Okay. So 21.3 seconds left. The Wolfpack will have the basketball. And coming up at halftime, Chalk Talk with Fran Fraschilla, Steve Levy, and John Calipari all coming your way. And we're just seconds away from the break. Well, this far, this far, it's been, you know, a very equally matched basketball game outside of Ryan Sidney and, and Julius Hodge. Two guys we expected to play great. Uh, Troy Bell. He's picking up second half. I think his team gets a good play. Oh, good play. Does follow right before the buzzer, and it counts to give the Wolfpack a 40 to 38 lead. He finishes the first half with 10 points. Sydney with 20 points to lead Boston College. So at the break, it's NC State up 40 for the second 20 minutes here in Raleigh. The Wolfpack incidentally 7 0 when leading at halftime this season but bc ties it up quickly bc's going to come out and be very aggressive early take it right to north carolina state i think they're going to challenge a little more on the interior try to create some foul opportunities state's got to be very positive very under control not out of control turnovers can be the difference in this ball game when you have such a tight game that's a tough tough shot it's out of control because you don't have great opportunity for rebound smith does a good job of getting that errant shot right there well the freshman who has played like anything but craig smith he has seven points. He's had a spectacular first year. Another offensive rebound for the Wolfpack. Got a bunch of them in the first half. And many second effort points, second chance points. Good pass. Boy, he just, he's got to go up and finish that. Smith did not, though, and it rolled off the rim. Cheryl on the drive ran right into his own man, Powell, Powell. and he lost it. Ran right into the side of Powell. So both teams a little sloppy. Good in the second half. Yeah. A travel on Smith. Gonna look at the first half stats. Boston College shot much better. 56% from the field. And look at the Wolfpack, just three out of 13 from three-point distance. Look at that offensive rebounding. We talked about the Wolfpack not being able to rebound. They've done a good job on that offensive glass first half. Do you expect the Wolfpack? to go inside a little more, Brad, so much of the first half was played from 15 feet and out. I would think so. Josh Powell is 12 for 8 inside. They need to take advantage of his, his low post prowess. I think it gives him a little more balance. I think you'll see him get a few more shots. Crawford slicing. It rolls away. And a nice save for BC. So BC can get something out of the transition. Taking some really tough shots in transition the past two times down the floor. That's a good move. Big shoulders. Nice. Smith went right to the basket, got his shoulders underneath Powell, created some space. Timeout, 17.55 to play in the game. All of a sudden, a surging Boston College has taken a four-point lead over the Wolfpack. And Brad Doherty, he's a guy that they look to step things up in the second half, and without him, Boston College might be in for a real struggle down the stretch. Yeah, he's really struggled on two for six in the first half. He's been really in between on shots. A couple times he could have finished with a nice dunk, but when you're in between, you become indecisive, and that's the way he seems to be playing at this point. Melvin dribbles it out of pressure. Oh, oh. Another inside for Hodge, a quick move. Good pass, and Hodge did a great thing by not putting that basketball on the floor. That would have been a cardinal sin. He kept it up, took his two steps, and made the layup. 18 points for Julius Hodge, who's their first field goal of the second half. Sydney so explosive in the first 20 minutes, leading all scores with 20 points. Troy Bell holding it down. Let's see if they try and keep number five for Boston College Sydney with that hot hand. BC will keep it. All over Troy Bell. He caught that basketball. They're really getting after him, putting a lot of pressure on him. Well, Troy Bell, the guy we've talked about, who comes into this one averaging 23 points per game, didn't really dazzle in the first half. Yeah, I, I think he's really trying to get his teammates involved. He took a couple of tough shots in transition and probably ill-advised, but 
he seems to be pressing, trying to make something happen for this ball club. And sometimes when you're really a good player, you do that. You try to do too much, and, and you don't end up doing anything good. But uh, fine young player. He's going to work himself through all this stuff, and uh, he's continuing to play hard. That's the key. He's three out of nine from the field. They try to inbounds for Sydney, and there's a foul by Crawford reaching in. So Sydney just exploded past Crawford. I mean, just put his body on him, got between he and the basket, and created that opportunity. Yep, the Wolfpack are trying to find someone who can stay with him. Yeah. <laughs> And nobody can yet. So Bell to set up a play. The senior Troy Bell. Good defense right now by the Wolfpack. A lot of talking going on, a lot of switches. Bell guarded by Hodge. Backs away for three, and he knocked it down. Ooh, that was a tough shot by Bell. Nice stutter step, created a little space. Tough shot. Troy Bell has not had the hot hand so far tonight, but just swatted out of there by Smith. Smith stayed home, did his homework on that one. And there's nothing wrong with this shot. It's well within the offense, as you see. Look at that space, created that gap. That's all you need in basketball is space. Uh, oh, another block by Smith. Two in a row. It's a six-seven shot blocker there. Letting with Dare come inside. A foul. Dornicamp picks up the personal, but Smith with back-to-back -back blocks. Smith comes from the weak side here. Nice block. Boy, he really elevated. Let's see him dominate inside there. He's got the oh, good job of power. Kyle says he's not going to have that one blocked. A good finish by the young man. He has 12. Boston College by three. Foul on Hodges. Bell pushing it up the side. He's the speed. Number two on Julius Hodge, the top scorer for Herb Sendick. And another quick whistle. And I'll tell you what, the referees are starting to buckle down. On the physical play away from the ball. Well, I tell you, Sydney posted up nice and strong. As long as he doesn't use hands, I don't think it's a foul. It was Sydney who picked up his fourth foul there. No wonder Skinner is hot. That's his top scorer tonight. Left hand. Watch it disappear here real quickly. You see it right there. That was the foul. Good call by Carl Hess. You can't touch him at all with your hands. You got to move those feet and get those elbows out wide. That's an expensive hook. 20 points for him. Now, we were talking about the big guys and their problems in the paint in the NBA. How about Yao Ming and Shaq coming up? The Rockets and the Lakers on ESPN. And a highly anticipated matchup of big men, but how much were they allowed to, to bang around? Oh, Tyler missed that point blank. Could not convert. What'll happen with Yao Ming and Shaq? I mean, the thing that wear Yao down will be actually Shaq's physical size, not the the, the fact that he's going to be manhandling because you can't do that in the NBA anymore. Yes, it's not yes. a physical manhandling type game. It's an athletic game, which that's fine. They, they wanted to get rid of all that stuff where guys were taking people to the ground and knocking people out of the air. But, you know, Shaq's not going to go out and rip the guy's head off like everyone's making it out to be. He's just 350 pounds and Yao's only 260. So, it's just a size issue. A quick whistle. 47-44 Boston College, and a look at what we have coming up for you. NBA Friday, it's the Bucks and the 76ers at 7 Eastern on ESPN2. And then that matchup between Yao and Shaq, 9.30 Eastern on Friday, the Lakers and the Rockets on ESPN. Marcus Somebody Melvin, way out front here starting the offense for them. swings to Cheryl on the right wing. And he's 30 feet from the basket. And just it's just a pass. There and there gets the cut. Crawford didn't take the long distance shot. Got close. Oh. And rolled in. And was halfway out and fell back in. Nice move. Cuts the Boston College lead to one. Watson in the pack. There you go. Here's Smith. That's what we've been looking for from Smith. That type of finish. He's had a couple opportunities in the first half. He let get by. I'm sure Coach Skinner talked to him at halftime and said, look, you get a chance to finish. You finish strong. He's into double figures now. Look. Another fast whistle. 
It's a hands-off second half, that's for sure. What made that happen was two unbelievable passes. Look at that pass right down into the middle of the lane by both of the, the, the passes. Both of them were very tough, tight passes that sometimes you get a hand on those things and they, they just work for Boston College. Brian comes in, going to camp. The big guy from Ontario comes out with his fourth foul. Nice inbound. Oh, with the foul. And he got fouled. Bennett came from behind and hit him on the arm. Another good pass. Recognizing the mismatches. Crawford recognizes that Powell has a smaller guy on him. There's the foul from behind. Smaller guy being Smith, who's not, he's not, not, you know, he's wider, but he's shorter, so. Throw it over the top. The Wolfpack, a much better foul shooting team than is Boston College. Powell at 80% from the foul line. And they have made as a team 9 out of 10 tonight. So that could be a real part of the story down the stretch. How well the Wolfpack shoots him at the line. That's in and out. Jinxed him. Making the free shots wins ball games. Got to make those free throws. Six eight, on a six two bell. Now Skinner going with much of his bench here. He's blind into the ball game. But Bell leading the offensive attack. And another whistle. No, it was not. Shot clock is down there. Inside for Smith. He fought his way in. Good job keeping his balance. Powell had him almost under the glass. Good strong move by Smith. Good pass. Five swings under the basket. Powell Smith. Smith picks up the personal. 13.51 to go in this contest. Which comes to you from snowy Raleigh, North Carolina. Boston College and NC State. The Wolfpack are 8-3. and three. Boston College out of the Big East. At 6-6, six and six, they're looking to snap a four-game losing skid. In the second half, Boston College continues to get the open shots. That time contested. And a nice move by Crawford to come out of there. It's tipped out of bounds. And a nice catch by my partner. Oh, man, that would have hit me between the eyes if I had caught that one. <laughs> I'm used to grabbing those donuts out of the sky nowadays, so my hands are still pretty good. You're not used to hearing rousing cheers from the NC State crowd. They wanted to hit me between the eyes, I think. <laughs> by three, but the Wolfpack have the ball. Oh, he hooked him. Good call. Good call. Marcus Melvin got that hand locked back around. Those hands we talk about, he caught him. Smith's banging him with that big body. There it is, right there. He got him. Good call. And it's hard when you're a big guy because you're, you're balanced. You know, when you're big and tall and you're beating and banging around there, you want to grab to get your balance back sometimes, not necessarily to hold the guy back, but you get caught, you're caught. Oh, he got hit on the elbow. Oh, he got hit on the elbow. No call. But he's, he's after. Trying to chase down Hodge. No foul on that one. There's Melvin. Hasn't been there for him tonight, but another second chance. They put it out of way. Look at Smith. Oh, look at Smith. How about that? Around the bend between the legs for the big fellow. Oh, oh man. Good gracious. <laughs> what an unbelievable shot. Andrew Bryant and Boston College has a 54 48 lead. I'm sorry, it's Andrew Bryant. <laughs> unbelievable shot. But Smith, with the creativity, dribbling out of difficulty like that. And a foul. Hodge got hit. See how to slow down Troy Bell. Watch this. Watch him hit him right on the elbow. Bam! You touch someone on the elbow, it is unbelievable. Now watch this. This is 6'7", 260 pounds. A little behind the back. A little between the leg. Oh, a little crossover dribble. He gave you the whole package right there in, in, within 10 seconds. And a, the, the assist. Special player right there. Just a freshman. 21 points, nine rebounds a game for that man, Craig Smith. Hodge at the line. Hodge oh, took a little knee to the knee to the knee. And, uh, 
Dude's got a little Charlie horse in that leg and uh, motion up to the bench. So he needs a break. Hobbs down to both. He's led NC State in scoring seven times in 11 games. Powell will return. 20 points, by the way, for Julius Hodge. And the man who scored 20 in the first half for Boston College, Ryan Sidney, he is on the bench with four fouls. Smith picked his game up a little bit. And uh, Bryant's made a couple of big shots, so they're trying to pick up the slack for him being out. And he threw it away. And Cheryl with the steal. Crawford couldn't get it. Oh, reverse. There's Smith running the floor. Offensive foul. Boy hustle by, by Cheryl. He makes the steal on the defensive end. Goes out of bounds, throws it back in, comes all the way down, hustles down offensively, comes back, takes a charge. Great hustle. So Smith and Boston College burning it up on a snowy night here in Raleigh, North Carolina. And the Eagles lead the Wolfpack by four. Sydney, good rebound. Look at this. Keeps playing. He's passing the ball. He's making excellent moves, turning those big shoulders, getting bumped, still scoring. Good blocks. I mean, he's doing a little. We saw him handling the ball right before we went to break, so uh, he's picked it up a notch. It's about time the nation figured out Craig Smith is one of the great freshmen in college basketball and should be mentioned in every conversation about the premier first year players in the game. Well, there's a lot of them this year, but I'm really impressed with the freshmen and can't quite figure out why they're so good, but they are. And uh, we don't know if it's lack of, of, of upperclassmen or just the idea that they get to play for AAU ball and those types of things, but uh, they're not shy. Watson took the contact, no whistle, but he will take the two. Hey, I'll take it every time. You know, Jermaine Watson goes right at the defender, takes a body shot, scores the back, oh, gets him ahead. Eagles by six. In the second half, Boston College has shot it well. Put it mildly, the Wolfpack has been cold as it is outside. Crawford there, a three, missed badly. Oh, that's just a, not a very not a very good play when you get a rebound, a tough rebound. You try to hit the home run ball. You've got to lead, take your time. Crawford squibs it over to Melvin. That three-pointer hasn't been there, but Powell got hung up. He threw it away, but Melvin got it back. they got to slow down. NC State's just out of control with the basketball. Both sides are. Finished off on the other end by Hennick, but certainly not artistic basketball. Oh, I mean, it's all, you know, 25-foot jump shots and long rebounds, but no one's being patient. You're, you're, you're in this ball game. Take your time. There's 10 minutes left. Run your offense. Execute it to a two. Cut, precision cuts, hard cuts, good screens. I mean, I think they should use the, the entire shot clock when they go down each time. Milk it until you get the perfect shot. If it doesn't happen, then you take the, the tough shot. Neither coach can be very happy oh, with the last that. couple of minutes because it plays like this. It's been frantic. It's been sloppy. A lot of tips, a lot of steals. So that's our action so far here in the second half. More coming up tonight. After our game, Reese Gaines and the Louisville Cardinals go to Greenville for a meeting with the East Carolina Pirates. That's going to be a tough one. Join Memphis coach John Calipari as he breaks down the game in Bristol. NCAA basketball on ESPN tonight. Smith taking his seat. Been an excellent second half for him. Eight points. He is 13 for the game. And City remains on the bench. With four fouls and 20 points. Well, you got to leave it there. There's just so much basketball left that anything could happen. He comes in and they'd rather have him the last four minutes of this game as opposed to. That's when he'll bring you back in. About I would four think or five so. Minutes. I think with four or five minutes to go, he'll come back in the ball game. Other than that, it's just taking too big of a risk. Sydney nine out of 11 from the field, scalded the nets in the first half. The Wolfpack has done very well at the line. Great game. Nearly tied up, no whistle. And BC basketball. Troy Bell says, let's set up a play. That team's picking up the intensity defensively. Let's see if they're patient with the basketball. Watson nope. works on Cheryl. Tossed up an air ball. Oh, it was just a broken play. No, no patience. 
That's, I mean, this is not good. I mean, the last three or four minutes, and look at Melvin kicking it. The last three or four minutes, it looks for all the world like the first exhibition game of the year by both Boston College. I'll tell you, and I, I, would, I would call a timeout, and I would, I would take my team, and I would, I would tell them, I'd say, look, you've got to slow down. We have to take better care of the basketball, okay? And I would point to the leaders on the team. I'd say, you, you, and you, you've got to make things happen on that basketball court, whether it be you show leadership by being patient, making sure people are where they're supposed to be. Well, that's got to be Scooter Sherrill for NC State and Troy Bell for Boston College, right? right? To slow down and make some things happen. And finally, a timeout by Al Skinner. Although it's amazing that neither coach wanted a timeout during that display. I mean, think about it. If that happens during practice, the coach is going berserk. Sure. You know, and he'll stop it and break it down. Say, you know, this is what we got to do. And I say this all the time, but it's so true that you practice every day executing your offensive plays. You run off those pits. You do everything to a T. And you do it with and without defense. So when you're in a game, don't vary from that. Run that offense, set those screens, make those cuts just like you do in practice. That's what you're familiar with. 9.20 left in the game. Al Skinner and Herb Sendick can't be very happy with what they've seen over the last four or five minutes. But Boston College trying to pull one out on the road here at RBC Center in Raleigh, North Carolina. Brad Doherty, Gable Brian Libby. As the snow falls outside, we're looking for someone to step up here in the second half on game track. You see, NC State has shot the ball very well. Oh. And a see, what has to happen is the team has to believe in the offense that you practice and you run. If they don't believe in it, then they start going away from it. Okay, so I've got to believe in what my coach tells me as far as what we're trying to run, the play we're trying to run. That's the most important thing. I'm not worried about the defender or whoever's guarding me, whoever's on. I'm going to run my, I'm going to go to my spot and do my job the best I can. And if, if it's a good play, it's going to work. Smith at the line. It's Boston College with the superior shooting number so far, 57%. This youngster right here, I mean, he, he is thick. He could be, look at that, man, look at the guns on this kid. Good, great, they need to go get him on the football team. He needs a dual scholarship. Heck of a basketball player. I'm jinxed him, though. Bragging on it too much. But Watson pulls away the rebound for the Eagles. They lead it by eight. Good point, they shoot 63% as a team. If I was North Carolina State, I think I would start putting a couple of those guys on the line with a few of my extra fouls. Try to get the uh, missed shot rebound. Yeah, I don't see foul trouble for North Carolina State, so why not? He's got nowhere to go. Back up off of him, make him pass it. Shot clock. Is it five? Watson banging against the wow. He got down by Wow. Yep, the shot clock was down to three. I mean, uh, he uses his body. Jermaine Watson really uses his body well, so when you play a guy like that, I mean, you give him a little space. Send him in there amongst your other big guys. Channel him towards, towards your better defenders and get some help because he's going to jump into you and get, get those foul calls. But great job by Watson being aggressive. Boston College has not been at the line much tonight. That their eighth foul shot, but they are making them. Now seven out of eight. Like I said earlier, they were not a good free throw shooting team, so they're the line, but they're making them. That's they where it not. You're right, 63%. But this evening, they're getting them to go at least so far. And they've opened up a 10-point lead because of it. The Eagles, because of this lead, have quieted the crowd here in Raleigh. A whistle and another hook. Oh, man. Well, those mistakes are, are just obviously, you know, you say it's killing him, but it is. It's... Possession lost and in this basketball game, which was so close at half. That's becoming a separation point. Three on Marcus Melvin, who has been stone cold from the field, 0 for 6 shooting. At halftime, it was a two-point game. BC led it 40 to 38. We like having a, a guard like Bell put the ball in his hands to break those presses because he's not afraid to look up court. Uh, a, a press defense, his own press, or three quarter court track looks one way. Hold on. He just blew by Hodge, and there was no help, no weak side help. 
I mean, he just took him off the dribble, and no one came over to help the tip stop the ball. Agbaye likes it, despite the fact he's in some pain, but he's up and cheering for Jermaine Watson. Look at Agbaye. He's all into the ball game. Look at him. I mean, he is into Look at those eyes. Well, he will not play again until next season for the Boston College Eagles, but making the trip and on the bench. That tells you a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Here's Cheryl Free. Right now, they need a spark. Watkins is short. They had two cracks on him. A lot of spinning around there. And now, finally, a whistle on the play. Although it did not look like he had picked the ball up, it did not appear that he had possession of it. He did get tied up eventually. So it will not be a traveling violation. Here's a guy who wants to be on the floor. The big 6'9 forward with that neck injury. He's finished for the year. But cheering on Boston College. The most dangerous men in the city work for the FBI, the CIA, and National Security. We got bombs on them. What? 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 Yeah. I should set it all. Like a big yeah, you security guards acting like real cops. You better watch your mouth. National Security. Hey. Sorry. PG-13 opens everywhere tomorrow. There's a Wendy's classic hamburger that's perfect for you. Made fresh right off the grill, so it's always hot and juicy. The classic hamburgers at Wendy's. It's better here. Want to turn dull hair into electric shine in just 10 days? Gabal, brought to you by Wendy's Super Value Menu, where you'll find super values every day. Boston College leading it 63 to 51, the biggest lead of the night for the Eagles. Yeah, they've done a good job of attacking North Carolina State. They're getting a little help from everyone, too. Jermaine Watson's come in and done a great job going aggressively to that basket, and they seem to have taken their intensity way up. Off the inbounds will be Crawford, the possession arrow going NC State's way. Look at the turnovers in the second half, just about even. Over the top to Melvin. He has not made a shot tonight. Well, Troy Bell done a good job defensively coming back and reaching and digging out. Oh, elbow. Okay. NC State pretty dreadful shooting it in the second half, four out of 20, and have been held to 11 points in this half. I'll tell you what, Troy Bell took a good pop on the chin there, got up a little too tight on Hodge, didn't give him a chance to put the ball on the floor and popped him. Julius Hodge, a guy who has been noted for it. His energetic play, let's say, he injected a lot of energy into the Wolfpack last year, but also some trash-talking skills and the forearm to the head of Steve Blake of Maryland that earned him a one-game suspension. It's always those wiry guys, man. Those, <laughs> those, those, those slender guys and wiry guys are the ones that always get you, the short guys, man. You know, those the big elbows guys are just, a little sharp, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, the big guys are a little laid back and know what they can do. Those, those guys get after you. Missed that free throw. That's a big free throw. He's all over the court, though. Julius Hodge really turns up to a heck of a basketball player, one of the premier players in the ACC, and uh, he just seems to get better and better. He has 21 points in this contest for the Wolfpack, but they're trailing. Nice patience by Boston College. Good job. Everybody setting nice screens. Smith leans in. Melvin collects it, outlets to Hodge. He got in. And up with the offensive foul because of it. Good job. Gotta be in control. That's four on Hodge. He turns his back. He's square. That's a good call. And Hennett taking the charge for the Eagles. Gotta be under control. So two major parts of the Wolfpack offense are in foul trouble. Hodge with four, Sydney. He also has four for Boston College. Once again, taking their time, Boston College. Three. 
Cheryl with the foul, but he can't believe it. Watson makes a nice move here. Good little stutter step. Maybe a little carry there, but there's a trip. That's a tough call, but I think it's the right call. What do you do? I mean, he, he does. He did get tripped. Even though they got tangled up. So Jermaine Watson will go to the line. The sophomore from Dorchester, Massachusetts. Has six points tonight. He came off the bench to really spark the Eagles in their win over UMass in early December. 11 points in just 20 minutes of play. And for Boston College, as we look at the youth of the team, the class breakdown, you'd have to say a bright future for Al Skinner Ooh, because look at that. Yes, five right. freshmen, three sophomores. That's exactly right. They've got ten players who are not seniors this year, and they're, they're competing hard. I mean, they've lost a four in a row, but I think they're, like Troy Bell told me before the game, says, you know, we're getting some chemistry, getting some chemistry together. It's starting to come. And the whole big thing is competing hard. Play as hard as you can. Proper for Powell, he was stripped and fouled. The NC State is likewise a youthful team with only one senior on the squad. That's Clifford Crawford. And uh, between the sophomore and freshman classes, they're tenable. Yes, sir. And that's a great looking looking outlook as well for this basketball club. And Herb Sendek did a great job last year with this club. And this year he's you know he lost a, a big piece early and effed them off, but they're going to continue playing hard. There's a lot of basketball left in this year, obviously, and uh, they're going to have to get better without him. Figure out who can do what. There's Eftemoff as we talk. Solid, solid player. Very savvy. And Josh Powell at the line. He's just a sophomore. Averaging 11 points, 5 rebounds. I see those big guys. Shoot those free throws right in it. It does my heart good to see a big fella go up and knock those free shots down. And Powell has 17 points. Oppressed by the Wolfpack. The Eagles break it. Watson on the alley oop. A nice catch. Then oh, played by Bryant. Good job. <laughs> Bryant throws great hands. You know, Watson gets out and makes a nice play. Gets past Cheryl in the corner. Boy, that's a tough, tough shot. Hey. Little patience. Wolfpack keep patience. alive. They've not scored in six minutes and finally break down. Good job by Cheryl going to the basket. Very common, by the way, for NC State, this young team, to have oh, Julius Grouse. He's out. Yeah, he is. That's number five. That's it. He's done. So they've lost Julius Hodge with his 21 points. Got a little bump there, and uh, foul was called. Well, Crawford has three, Powell has three, and Melvin has three. See what happens here. Oh, yeah, anybody's his, his face? It looked like there, didn't it? Nice throw. Uh, 66, 56. I think he was just sticking his hand up, trying to look and see the ball, and accidentally put his hand. See, he's got it. Oh man! Woo! Grabbed him by the throat. I don't know why he did that. Let's look at this one more time. Grabbed him by the throat there. Oh, he did that and did it right in front of the official. front of the official so he is retired for the night with 21 points and five rebounds yeah I think what happened is, is Troy Bell had Hodges shirt before the play happened just kind of holding on to it Hodges was trying to get his hand off of him and accidentally hit him in the face senior versus a uh, sophomore there really uh yeah, got him into a situation where he got him to Troy do the foul on him by just getting to overreact. Troy Bell, a terrific foul shooter. So he makes Hodge pay. 68 56. Low for Powell and he's free. Hey, Powell's got the ability to score on the interior. They need to take more advantage of that. I mean, NC State has to continue to throw that basketball down to that block to whoever or whomever. You've got to be getting shots around that goal where you have the chances to get fouled. You can't come down and shoot these chaotic jumpers. In and out by Bryant. 
on a three-point shot, so maybe the break that the Wolfpack needs. Coming up on the five-minute mark, they're down ten. I mean, Powell's taking a toll. Let's go to him one more time. Give him a chance to touch the ball. There you go. They try to oh. out of bounds off the Wolfpack. And don't forget, coming up next, as our doubleheader continues, number 18, Louisville, taking on East Carolina. It's going to be a tough, tough game, and that is right around the corner here on ESPN2. Brilliant minds. Coach Al Skinner and I both have brilliant basketball minds because no I, I picked out <laughs> putting uh, Mr. Uh, Sidney back in the ballgame around the five-minute mark, and it's the five-minute mark, and he returns. Well, you, you were two seconds off. You know, well, was 58. That's, you know. that's the clock last part. That's not my <laughs> Ryan Sidney <laughs> sitting for a huge chunk in the second half because of four fouls. But he had 20 first half points. He distributes the Well, he comes right in and gets right in the ball game. Nice pass to Smith. They immediately double team Sidney, who's fresh coming into the ball game. And he makes a nice dump down to his partner Smith on the block with Jeff Hood. Smith is 16. The freshman. Oh, man. Interference, countdown basket as it jarred the backboard. And Bryant came across from the weak side, tried to swat it, and actually got his fingers caught in the goal. So a good basket. Boston College and NC State at the RBC Center. It is snowing here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Got a good one indoors, though. They will Bryant, Brad Doherty. Boston College trying to eke out a victory and break a four-game losing streak. Cameron Penniman just comes into the game for North Carolina State. Oh, gives, uh, Scooter Shirt. Good pass. There's Bell. Good offense. That's a great play right there. Bell comes off a little curl screen right at the elbow. And he gets a little pass from about eight feet. He knows he's shooting it before he even turns a corner. It was a two-pointer, but they keep the lead at a dozen. And the Wolfpack, as the minutes started, cut down for them, unable to cut into that lead. Bell comes out of the fray with it. Good job by Troy Bell. That shows great leadership. He walks. And Al Skinner very disappointed because he knows Troy Bell made the right move to start running some clock, but the youngster, Watson, the sophomore, turned it right back over to the Wolfpack. Hot deals on notebook PCs now at Gateway. This awesome system has a DVD CDRW combo drive, a 1.7 gig processor, and lots more, starting at just $9.99. Save up to $250 after mail-in rebates now on select Gateway in-store PCs when you buy an in-store LCD display, printer, and broadband service. I'll take it. Call 1-800-GATEWAY today. These people are making a New Year's resolution to enjoy life. They all called Hair Club. If you feel good about yourself, you'll be able to accomplish anything you want. It was the best phone call I ever made. The me that you see right now is the me that I want you to see. It's the best me. That's what Hair Club is. Make your resolution. Call 1-800-HAIR-CLUB today. Ever wondered what it's really like to be a soldier? What do you got? I have a sit rep in Alpha Company. Team, ready to be verified. Verified. Put yourself in the picture with this free video. You'll see over 200 great jobs in the Army and over 180 in the Army Reserve. You'll also see what skills you learn, how you can earn money for college, even what soldiers do in their free time. Call 1-800-984-ARMY now and get this free T-shirt and your free video. Put yourself in the picture and see what it's really like to become an Army of One. Great devotion to a single. Maurice Gaines in Louisville looking for their 10th straight win visiting East Carolina. Dave and Brad, back to you guys. Back in Raleigh, Boston College up a dozen. NC State needs to cut into that 12-point lead. They have the basketball here with 3.43 left in the game. The time starting to run out on NC State. NC State's got to go Josh Powell. You've got to get him the basketball. I think he needs to touch it on the block. Well, NC State just awful shooting it in the second half. Oh, man. Although Cheryl knocks back the three to improve on that number. It's a big shot by Cheryl. You would expect that. Now they double team Bell, but he got free. Speaking of free, there's Sidney. Give him 22 points. <laughs> He's probably the guy I wouldn't leave open. He and Bell. Yeah. I mean, you got a key on those cats. Good pass, good patience. Everyone broke, they broke that little trap by looking up the court, looking up at the basket. 
Big three by, by Cyril down here. As mentioned, 22 for Sydney, but those were his first two in the second half because of all those fouls. He was playing with four. Good pass down to Powell. Good job. Powell's had a big night. He's very capable, points. very capable for this basketball team. You know, when you can't play, if you're injured, you have to do some cheerleading. It's as big a part of the game as anything. You see Eftemoff and Hodges here, there, saying, look, you know, you played a great game. We need to do this. Keep your head up. Keep digging. Hey, that's a great teammate right there. That's That relationship is what you remember when you graduate and move on from these places is guys like Eftemoff in your ear prodding you on to do better. Hodges found out, but... A guy that they expected to be a major contributor this season with his passing ability, his ability to shoot from outside, such a nice array of skills. Mm -hmm. Solid, solid player, does everything well, and uh, just compliments his teammates. Same thing with Akbai, just standing there cheering his teammates on, very excited for his teammates. And what you like to see, that's what it's all about. They give Akbai some extra points because he looks like he's in pain. Yeah, he does. Look at this big guy handling this basketball. Ooh. That's a that's a luxury right there. You have a 6'7, 265 pound guy who handles that ball. He's so low to the floor as well. You're not gonna take it for a good pass. Bell got hammered. Well, you know, he should have shot that ball day before the, the, the foul came. He was wide open. Go ahead and make that shot. Don't stop the clock. Boston College has really improved on its season numbers. At least tonight, 59% shooting. Just 34% on the road, but much, much hotter in Raleigh. Oh, you know, and like I say, uh, this basketball team came out earlier and just spoke some of these guys, and they, they just felt like if they could get a break and, and start believing in each other through good play, that the, the confidence would grow. And that's what's happening tonight. You're seeing a basketball team that could be on the verge of turning things around just through a lot of self-esteem issues. And uh, I know Coach Skinner is proud of the way these kids have played this ball. Bell made both of them. They fouled the wrong guy there, that's for sure. He's such a great foul shooter. Up over 80% for the year. He has 19 points. And so the minutes are ticking away, Brad, and they just can't cut into this lead. They're really struggling, but hey, there's Cheryl again. There go. Team, nowhere to go. They get it back. Michelle here's fouled on a three-point effort. He'll go to the line. Well, that is a lot of very good foul by the freshman. You do you never want to foul a, a three-point shot or a jump shooter, much less. And now uh, and plus you stop the clock. Smith runs out. And that's the yeah, second time tonight we've seen this type of action. You don't want to do that. Never stop that clock. Let that thing run until I mean you even distract the officials if you have to and get that clock ticking. Each second so valuable. Well, if he makes them all, it's an eight-point game with 2.14 to play. That will not happen now. All right, it's good. Take your time getting there. Bend those knees. Take a deep breath and stroke it. Don't try to guide that ball. You're going to just shoot it. Well, he finally missed a foul shot. He had connected on 35 consecutive free throw attempts, dating back to the second half of the Temple game, January 26th. Wow. I don't need to give him any free throw tips. And he had been... 12 for 12 this year. Yeah, sounds awful tight. Maybe the ball's got a lot of air in it or something. That's what happened whenever I missed. It's always the ball and the rim. What a Oh, what an awful pass, man. Oh, you know he knows it too. He yeah, said, that's he my bad. Mistake. He made that mistake. Now, you got to come back get home as defensive end senior and make something happen. Well, the crowd has suddenly sprung to life. 76-67. Melvin lines up a three. Hasn't hit a shot all night. He's 0 for 7. Powell gets out of there with it. Crawford gives it back to Powell. He doesn't want to shoot it. Watkins does. And they've got a ball game here with a minute 48 to play. Wow. What a possession for North Carolina State. We saw a little bit of everything, including a lot of people leaving their feet throwing passes, but hey. You gotta do what you gotta do. Six point ball game. Well, tomorrow night the NBA season continues. A doubleheader on ESPN and ESPN2. 
It'll be the Lakers taking on the Houston Rockets at 9.30 Eastern time as Shaq versus Yao Ming at 9.30 on ESPN. I mean, we've got a heck of a basketball game all of a sudden. And that despite the fact that North Carolina State is 5 for 25 shooting in the second half. I mean, this is a deep, deep three. But the thing that started all this was not only the play that, that Troy Bell made before this, where he threw the basketball away, but the foul on Craig Smith. That was a tough, tough foul that gave Scooter Sherrill a chance to go and make two shots and cut even more to this lead. Tell you what, in the last minute, the crowd has become a factor. A foul against the Wolfpack with a minute 47 left. Number two on Sherrill. 76 to 70, but you could feel the jolt of electricity that the crowd here at the RBC Center just inflicted on the, this contest. Yeah, and this is actually not a bad foul. I mean, everyone's upset, obviously, but the clock has stopped. He's got to make these shots to add to the advantage. So, uh, as North Carolina State, you get a little bit of an opportunity if he doesn't make these shots to get a rebound. No damage and lost some time, but he makes the first one, so he's doing his job. Good job by Watson stepping in, trying a little mental toughness, making that free throw. Now for NC State, is a three-pointer on the next possession something you're looking to do automatically? I don't think it's automatic. I mean, if, if you come down and you get the two, it's just still, it's a six-point ball game. You got, you got at least two possessions coming. Watson makes two pressure-filled foul shots, 78-70. If you get a wide-open three-pointer, obviously, I think you take it, but you don't force it because you don't want sporadic exchanges. That needs too much time. You want quality instead of quantity, I think. Watkins will shoot a three. And a foul in the rebounding. And that will go against NC State and against Powell. And a tough foul there. Well, that is. That, that really hurts. That's four on Powell. What you really, what you want to do is if you're North Carolina State, you want to come down, you want to move the basketball, okay? You want to get three good passes with the basketball. And the first person that's open in, at the three-point line he should take the opportunity, just like that. There was nothing wrong with that shot. He had a great chance, may have gotten bumped. What you don't want to do is to take a, an erratic shot because then you're mismanaging the clock because it becomes chaos, and that means huge chunks of time. Now, on the other side, if you're Boston College, you want to come down, you want to take the ball, you want to take the air out of the basketball. No quick shots. Keep that ball hot. Keep it moving around. Everybody's touching it. Keep North Carolina State chasing you, trying to find it. Use the clock. Tell what, BC is making the foul shots tonight. 17 out of 20. Wow, that's uh, awesome. That well, wins ball game. For them, it's it's really outstanding. That wins ball game. They just lost a tough one to Syracuse on the road in which they missed eight key foul shots in a seven-minute stretch. And it may have cost them a victory up there, 82-74, the Orangemen. You know, you, you, you're better off in that circumstance. If you can't get in front of the player, if Troy Bell can't get his feet over there, let, I mean, you're almost better off letting him shoot the basketball. The problem with this is the clock has stopped. I keep saying that. And he's shooting two shots with no movement of the clock. You know, I'd rather he make two and, and the moments continue to, or the seconds continue to tick off, and I have the basketball in my hand. Because I know I'm going to get fouled, and the clock's going to stop Go again. Drop and make the pair. A press by the Wolfpack. Broken by Sydney. Okay. Easy pair. There you go. Take the air out of the basketball. Got to get up there and foul him. Got to foul him. You'd love to foul anyone other than Bell. Might be the best At this point in time, you foul anyone. You're down almost a minute. You better foul somebody. Turns out they foul the sophomore, Jermaine Watson. But nobody for Boston College is missing the free throws. BC tonight from the field shooting a season high 59%. Mm. Ryan Sidney's a big part of that. Yeah. Came out was really hot, got this team going. He's continued, even though he had fouls come in to play well. All right, that's a big miss. Eight-point ball game, minute 10 seconds, plenty of time. Come back and come down and make a three. Eighty-one seventy-two. Oh, nice dish. Crawford did. Timeout. 
81-74. NC State burns a timeout with a minute three to play. And it's still doable. But very doable. Very doable. You got to get a foul as soon as the basketball comes in. Stop the clock again. And just hope they miss some free throws. Box out nice and, and heavy on the backboard. Try to get that free throw. A look inside the Atlantic Coast Conference and how NC State stacks up its early, of course, in conference play a one and one record. Eight and three overall. Duke leading the whole pack, leading the whole country undefeated. Ranked number one and 12 and 0. And on Saturday, a major showdown with Maryland and a great coaching matchup, too. Brad Coach K against Gary Williams and two of the best coaching minds in the sport. Yeah, you know, Gary Williams, very intense coach, very intense competitor. You know, this Maryland team, boy, I really thought they were getting ready to turn the corner. They played really well against Florida State the other evening. Uh, but just you know, they struggled last night didn't play real well. I don't know what it is I keep thinking Ryan Randall's gonna come out and have a huge basketball game and make a huge impact But I don't know it's gonna be a tough game for him against Duke NC State has run out of timeouts the possession arrow to Boston College the next time it occurs BC ahead 81-74 and coming up next, number 18, Louisville, on the road at East Carolina. As soon as we finish up, Noah Raleigh. Oh, he had it. He just threw a little, oh, man. He had him wide open. Just threw it right through the pass. Gentlemen could not complete the steal and a quick foul. 59.1 seconds to play. And again, it's Watson who they will put to the line. Crawford picking up his fourth foul for Herb Sendick. Watson needs to step in and make these free throws. He's done a good job so far. He's been at the line more than any other player in the game. And he is 6 for 10. Josh Powell back in. For the Wolfpack. The clock is really their enemy at this point. It is. is. Good for one. And one of two. That's the only way they can stop the clock because Seneca has no more timeouts left. 50.3 to go. I just think this team, this North Carolina State team, can learn a lot. From what, I mean, they, they gave a great effort, and, and they're still in this ball game. But I'm just, even if they come back and win, I think they can learn a lot from what Josh Powell's been able to give them throughout this game. It's an inside present. They really need that. Hodge has not been on the floor for the last three minutes or so because he fouled out. Again, it's one out of two for Watson. Crawford actually blocks, and Powell went hanging on the rim. Are they going to tee him up there? I think he was trying not to land on top of uh, another player. He sure was. Powell going up, hanging on the rim. Senek wants to know what's the call. Shot goes up, and there seems to be some. See, everybody goes up and tries to block it. I think he, 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 he was trying not to land on some folks. And because of that. Yeah, he had a player underneath him. I think he was trying not to. He could have seriously hurt someone. Very, including himself. And Josh Powell, 6'9, 223 pounds, and now the referees will explain the call to the coaches. It is going to be a technical foul nonetheless. So Bell will shoot. Boston College has been deadly at the foul line. The Bell hits and it's 21 out of 27. So 20 points for Troy Bell. That's nothing new, of course. Louisville and East Carolina coming up. But should NC State fall here tonight, and they are down 85-76, it'll be their first home loss of the year. Mm. I'll tell you, and, uh, this Boston College Club seems to have found a little, little bit of a, a, a niche here of how they're going to play. Bell high up for the rebound. Cheryl has to tie him up and foul him. 37.4 left. 
You know, he really had a he's had a good second half. Troy Bell has. You know, came out earlier the ball game, took some really tough shots, questioned those shots, but boy, he's bounced back as a as a senior and really showed some leadership and uh, has held the glue. He's been the glue for this basketball team. It's almost as if Troy Bell, who has been a spectacular college player, nine for nine at the free throw line, he's just golden here. It's almost as if he could care less with the shooting percentages as long as BC wins and plays well. And he's just not missing it that and, and, and that's what it's all about. Uh, that, that's leadership. You know, you don't really care if you shoot 30 percent or 50 percent. You don't get caught up in all that. You got a good shot, you take it. If you make it, you make it. You don't, you don't. But the, at the end of the day, you're doing things to help make your teammates better. And, uh, win ball game. A poor foul shooting team is Boston College, 63 percent. But they made a liar of that stat tonight. They made 24 out of 30 and a whole bunch of important ones here late. That's the way it's going in the final moments. Powell couldn't get it. Crawford does convert. But it won't be enough for NC State. It's Bell back to the line. Well. Rex Chapman, PJ uh, Armstrong, guys down scouting. And Rex Chapman there scouts for the uh, for the Phoenix Suns and Kenny Williamson's there. He scouts for the Knicks and uh, they all came out to watch Troy Bell and uh, I'm gonna have to ask these guys. I wonder if they were impressed tonight. I'm sure they were. Bell 11 out of 11 at the strike. Well, that's awesome. Good stroke. He looks like a senior yeah. shooting foul shots. Yeah, he does. Been there, done that. Not gonna rattle this guy. Probably jinx him, but you're not gonna rattle him. 89-78. East Carolina and Louisville coming up. And this one's just seconds away from finishing up. Boston College will win on the road here tonight. In ACC country, the win on Tobacco Road and beat NC State, knocking the Wolf back to eight and four. A win that Al Skinner and Boston College really needed. They had lost four in a row to fall to six and six. Yeah, really a good win for Boston College. I'll tell you, I'm going to look back at the end of the year, and I'm going to look at this game. I think it could be the catalyst for something big. This team is uh, getting a little confidence, which is what they need. Sydney hands off for Smith. The freshman fouled with less than a second to play. Now the RBC Center ready to empty out into the snowfall here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Now Skinner smiling now. He'll go to seven and six on the season. And getting a win against a team that is expected to qualify for the NCAA tournament, the Wolfpack, and beating them on their home court. So indeed, come March Madness, and perhaps those last few NCAA berths, this could be a very important win for BC. Twenty points for Smith and Boston College. Twenty-eight out of thirty-four from the foul line tonight. Easily their best foul shooting performance of the season. Boston College wins it 93 to 81. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more information, log on to ESPN.com. For Brad Doherty, I'm Dave O'Brien. Thanks so much for joining us. And now it's time for Conference USA Basketball, Louisville and ECU from Greenville, North Carolina. Here's Bob Carpenter and Larry Conley. Take it away, gentlemen. Thank you, Dave O'Brien. Ninjas Coliseum in Greenville, North Carolina, the home of the Pirates of ECU. They have been very difficult to...